Hi, I'm Belinda Carley, the Director of the Institute of Personal Care Science, and we get asked a lot of questions about pH testing and adjustment. Now, I've got a couple of videos on how to check pH and how to adjust it, and even how to make your buffer solutions. But we still get a lot of questions from people asking, should cosmetic products be diluted to 10% to test pH? Now, I think part of the confusion here is coming from that's how we test raw materials. It's not how we test cosmetic products. So cosmetic products that come in a cream, lotion, emulsion, liquid, foaming gel, or other liquid type form should be tested directly as they are. Now there's a couple of reasons for this. The first is when we are selecting actives or preservatives for our cosmetic formulas, they can sometimes be very pH specific or pH limited. So we need to check and adjust the pH of our formulas exactly as they are without dilution because we need to make sure that we're putting the actives and preservatives into the formula at a pH that is suitable for those actives or preservatives to do their job. So we must test the actual product without dilution to know this for sure. Another reason we don't want to dilute these standard cosmetic products before testing pH is because consumers apply them directly to their skin or their hair as they are. So we need to know the exact pH of those products as consumers would use them to help make sure that they're safe for consumer use. If you dilute the product, you don't necessarily know what the pH is of the product that would be applied directly to the hair or the skin. So it's absolutely crucial that you test the pH of the product not in a diluted form. Now there's a couple of situations where we would dilute the cosmetic product and then test the pH. And that is when the product comes in a bar form or if it comes as a powder to be mixed with water before application. Now in both of these scenarios, it would also be impossible to test pH of the product as a bar or as a powder. But in both of these scenarios, we're talking about wetting the product, diluting the product, mixing it with water, then it will be applied to the consumer. Now in that case, diluting the product as a 10% solution and then checking the pH is very relevant because that's how your consumer is going to use the product. As mentioned, you can't test the pH of a solid product or a powder product. In fact, pH is a measure of ions in a liquid formulation. So it needs water as a continuous phase for you to be able to measure pH in the first place. So you also can't test the pH of oils and nor is it relevant because oils don't have a pH value because there is no water present for that charge to be carried. So unless you have a solid product or a powder product that needs to be mixed with water, you would always test the pH of the cosmetic product exactly as it is. Creams, lotions, gels, foaming gels, all of your liquid and semi-solid products should be tested the pH of the product as it is for the many reasons I've outlined in this video. Where you need to dilute the product before using it, then you would dilute it and check the pH. We dilute some active materials in water to test the pH of the raw material. But we don't do this as standard practice for a finished product because most of the time consumers are using their cosmetic products straight as they come from the packaging. They're not diluting them either. And of course we need to make sure that the preservatives and actives will be biocompatible with the rest of the formulation at the pH exactly as it is without dilution. Well, I hope that's helped clear that up for you. And don't forget to check out those other videos where we show you how to create buffer solutions and test and adjust pH. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up. Please leave any questions or comments below and make sure you subscribe to receive notifications about all our videos. Happy formulating.